Aloha, this is Heidi at ECPC. In this video, I'm going to show you how I'm making some do-it-yourself or homemade stretchy flat cloth diapers. I already have some flat cloth diapers that are made out of stretchy fabric similar to this. This blend is cotton hemp with a bit of spandex to give it two-way stretch. I ordered three yards of this from Nature's Fabric. They sent this squished into a flat rate envelope and it came really quickly, which is what I'm very thankful for. I'm making my own because I am running out of time here. I'm going to be moving very soon and I wanted some more flats since they're so good for traveling, for hand washing and hang drying. And most of the shops that I get flats from, I just could not get them quickly enough. This is a no-sew project that you could do just with your fabric and some scissors. If you have a serger, then you can finish the edges of the flats all fancy. If you don't, you can just leave them raw edges. Stretchy knit fabrics like this don't tend to fray on the edges, so you don't really have to finish them in pretty colored thread. I do have a sewing machine and I have what's called an overcasting foot. So if I have time, I'll finish the edges with that. It looks kind of similar to if they were serged, but the difference is it doesn't cut off and even out the fabric along the edges as I do the stitch. Now, since I do have a sewing machine, I'm also using that for these boosters. I started this project like three months ago and I have still not completed the set of 12 boosters. For these, I have two layers of organic cotton French terry. I've placed them so the loops are in the inside. The smooth side is just here on the back. And then I've topped it with one layer of organic cotton velour. I just really like the feel of organic cotton blur against the skin. The way I've been finishing them is once I have the three layers together, I'm using just a straight stitch around the edges to hold them together. And then if any bits are uneven, I'm going around and just trimming them and evening them out with the scissors. That's because when I do the overcasting stitch, all three layers need to be flush and even for the stitch to really catch and work. Again, with a serger, the serger has a blade and it actually cuts off the excess fabric at the same time that it's stitching it. So that's a nice benefit. Without a serger, I'm basically sewing a straight stitch around, taking my pair of scissors, evening out the fabric, and then doing the overcasting stitch just to kind of wrap around and really nicely finish off the edges. This particular fabric is made with cotton, hemp, and spandex and it is 300 GSM or grams per square meter. So that refers to the weight of the fabric. I'm going to be pairing this folded origami fold with one of the boosters. Newborn flats tend to be around 20 or 22 inches square. Infant flats, somewhere around 24 or 25 inches square. One size flats tend to be about 28 inches square and toddler flats are about 30 inches square. So this fabric came at 60 inches wide. I ordered three yards and a yard is 36 inches. So I'm going to be doing two flats side by side, three this way and end up with six flats plus some left over. I believe if you're trying to maximize, get the most flats out of your yardage, you're going to want to order at least five continuous yards. I got just three yards because I just want to add six flats to the six flats I already have and have a nice even dozen and the shipping was a little bit cheaper keeping it at three yards. I'll leave a link to Nature's Fabric below. These fabrics over here I got from Wazoodle Fabric. I can link them as well. And these little clippies, they're way better than using pins. So much easier. Step one, pre-shrink the fabric. I have just three yards of thin fabric here, so I think I can fit this in my machine all at once. If you bought a really long piece of fabric, you might want to consider cutting it down possibly into five yard chunks but I should be able to put this all in. So I'm going to wash it on hot with some detergent, dry on my regular medium, wash on hot, dry, wash on hot, dry. Then once the fabric shrunk down a bit, that's when I'll get to cutting. You don't wanna dive right in and cut your fabric and then have it shrink and your diapers end up smaller than you thought they would be. I am gonna use detergent when I do these washes. This is going to start prepping the fabric, removing some of those natural oils that prevent it from absorbing. For my machine, I pretty much have to do heavy duty to get enough water in there. I'm going to put this at 
to extra hot because that's the level that I use when I'm washing my diapers. Maximum spin speed is fine and that's like an extra rinse. I think I'll take that off for now. I'm probably going to do about three of these hot wash cycles so I'll just use basic settings for now. Okay, we're done with the first hot wash. I think that half a scoop of detergent was too much for clean fabric, so maybe I'll just use about a quarter scoop next time. For the dryer, I'm just going to put it on the normal setting because I just usually do like a normal medium type setting when I dry the diapers. The fabric is already a bit thicker now, even after just that first wash and dry cycle. It feels really soft. I really like this fabric. I'll go ahead and wash on hot and dry two more times. We finally made it to the apartment in Thailand that we'll be living in for the next two months. It was a long three week journey. I'm so excited to open up our suitcase of cloth diapers and get back to cloth diapering. Three weeks at disposables was a long time. <laughs> and I still need to cut this fabric into the DIY flat cloth diapers I was making. I didn't get this chance to do that before I moved out. We've already put his potty in the bathroom over here. Want to come see? Step two is time to cut the fabric. You don't need anything complicated for this. A simple pair of fabric scissors will do. If you have a table with cutting mats and a rotary cutter and one of those big square sewing rulers, that's nice to have, but it's definitely not necessary. I'm filming this portion of the video already a year after that previous clip, so I've cut some of the flats already. I cut two out toddler size. So these squares are a bit bigger than 30 inches. I'll show you how I figured out how to cut the square. And then I ended up cutting two at like a newborn size just because I needed something to use with flappy nappies, which are a drop flap diaper specifically for elimination communication. And I was gifted one of the wool covers, but the insert area to use inside that cover was super small. So I was doubling up like two newborn 20 inch square flats to fit inside. So you don't need too expensive of tools, your fabric, a way to prep it, measuring tape, some scissors. It's nice to have fabric marking pens. If you do have a long ruler, that's a bonus too. I never go anywhere in the world without a trusty tape measure. Toddler flats are usually around 30 inches square, but I just wanted to make them as wide as I could. I knew that my fabric was approximately 60 inches wide. 60 inches is right here, so it's actually wider than that. It may have stretched when I hung it to dry on the drying rack. But I didn't care so much on the toddler flats to get them an exact size. I just wanted as big as possible. So for those, the first step was to fold this fabric in half. Okay, so yeah, this is showing with it rolled. It's showing about 31 inches there. I have one that I've been using for months now, so I'm just kind of curious to compare and see if this one has shrunk a bit. Yeah, it looks like it's a little bit smaller, so perhaps the additional washes and dries that this has gone through. You can also see that the color has really changed. It was this nice natural color to start with, and it's kind of gotten bleached over time. So I'm just gonna go with this width that might be up to about 32 inches um, if all this curling <laughs> were to straighten out. And the curling is fine, it doesn't affect using the flat. Okay, so for a square, I want two equal length sides. So I'm going to take this side and match it over to this. If those are both the same length, we should end up with a square. Even here, these two pieces are not quite matched. So then for the toddler flats, I could either mark it off or just go ahead and cut along there and then open this up and cut right down this seam. And then I would end up with two of these toddler size flats. So when you have a 60 inch wide piece of fabric, you can expect to put two toddler size side by side. Next, I made the newborn flats to use with the flappy nappies. And those are typically 20 inches by 20 inches. And I had kind of an uh, aha moment today. Yeah, it's showing 19, but it's kind of rolled up a bit. Yeah, it stretches out to 20. Is you would want them 20 inches square, so you could go one, two, three and in 60 inches wide, you would nicely fit three newborn flats. 
I ended up with two because I messed up cutting my third one and instead of getting a square, I ended up with a long rectangle. So make sure you're not too tired. Make sure you can focus on what you're doing when you do this. Since I ended up making the two newborn flats, that made it that I no longer have enough fabric here to make four more toddler size flats, but I could see what I can make out of this. If you're going to be drawing on the fabric, it is nice to have a straight edge. I'm going to use this book. If you have one of those long sewing rulers, that would be really nice. First of all though, I need to figure out how many flats can I fit here. So I'm going to fold it this time this way because that's now the shorter direction to see what size these flats can be. This is super hard to line up. We don't have a dryer where we're currently staying so I hung it to dry and then I hung it over some chairs and it's like kind of bubbled and I have to remind myself it doesn't have to be perfect. It will still work as a diaper. Okay so let's see about how wide this is here. I'm seeing 25 inches, so a little bit more maybe. So that would be around an infant size flat. See over here is 26. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I can get it any better, more consistent. Yeah, this is showing that if I unrolled that, it'd be about 26 inches. I'm just gonna do kind of a test here before I cut to see. So if that was one flat there, and then that was another flat there. We'll end up with that excess on the side. So again, I will take this edge and bring it over here to make my square. I just cannot get these two edges to line up any better than that. This is what I'm working with here. So I've got my washable fabric marker. Now this is showing at 26 plus a rolled edge. And this is showing at 26 plus a rolled edge. I am gonna go ahead and cut through both layers. I'm unrolling the edge a little bit to make it easier to start cutting. I thought it was kind of funny that I've been traveling with sewing scissors in my suitcase. But I looked up the other day the list of possessions that a Tibetan Buddhist monk carries. They usually have a bag on their shoulder and a bowl for collecting alms, collecting food donations. And they also typically carry a sewing kit with scissors, needle, and thread. So I thought maybe I'm not so strange and unminimalist if even a super minimalist monk carries a small little sewing kit to mend their robes with. Okay, so let's slide this one piece out of the way. So for this one, I can just cut down here without having to mark it. I'm going to use my book as a little bit of a weight so fabric doesn't move around. Okay, so separate those. There's one flat. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit jaggedy. I think I might go in and just <laughs> try to correct that a little bit there. We got two, I would say, infant-sized stretchy flats. Now, if you have a serger and you're gonna serge off those edges, it would take care of that jaggedness there. This is what's left of the fabric here. So again, if I take this side and line it up to this side. I suppose if you have iron, you could try to iron out this curl as much as possible. This extra piece you could cut into pieces to make boosters. I sewed my boosters, but you really don't have to do that. You could just use like rectangle,
pieces of your fabric as boosters. So if you're just doing completely no sew. I did prefer this method of opening up the fabric to cut it. I felt like I could cut straighter that way than on the other piece where I just cut along the fold. That was making it more jagged. So I'm happy with these two additional infant flats. So here I've got a newborn flat, infant flat, and toddler flat. I should have been able to make three newborn if I'd cut them correctly, four infant and two toddler flats out of the three yards of fabric I started with. With my baby, I did find that it's nice to have various sizes of the stretchy flats. We didn't start with the newborn ones. We started from about infant size just because we were using different types of newborn diapers. But when you do the origami fold, the rise of the diaper will basically be half whatever the length of your flat is. And you can kind of modify that, but I never really had much luck with modifying it where you don't bring it all the way up. You stop a little bit lower in order to make a bit higher of a rise. I just like everything to match up really nice and neat. So I don't know, I didn't love trying to modify it. Instead, I preferred to go on to the next size flat. So if somebody were doing it all the way from birth using square stretchy flats, I do think it is nice if you can to have the different sizes of newborn infant one size, which is the only one we don't have here as an example. So 28 inch square and then the toddler. Look how teeny, teeny tiny that newborn is. I did use some infant size flats from Fruit of the Womb diapers, but I kind of messed up on the sizing and I got them when my baby was pretty much outgrowing the absorbency of those and it would have been better to get next size up. I didn't really understand at the time that sizing for stretchy flats is a bit different than sizing for woven flats. I think I just measured one of my Green Mountain diapers one size flats. And then based on that, I ordered and I didn't realize that those muslin flats that I had, or might have been a bird's eye flat, I'm not sure, are kind of different sizing than the stretchy flats are. So I didn't order the best size to be able to keep using it for a long time. And then, <laughs> Because of that, we switched to one size and it seemed like in no time, those already were not tall enough of a rise and we needed toddler size instead. So babies, they do just keep growing and growing and growing. If you're making the flats yourself and you're able to get a good price on the fabric, maybe it's on sale, or perhaps you're upcycling some fabric that was previously made into something else, then it is nice to go ahead and have various sizes shown are the newborn infant and toddler. The one size would be right in between there. Step three is optional. If you happen to have a serger, then you can go around and finish the edges of your flats. You know, choose a pretty color of thread or the alternating colors that look really nice and finish these off. However, it is not necessary with a stretchy knit fabric like this one. Uh, it doesn't fray on the edges. So I've been using this flat for months and it's still perfectly fine, even though I never surged, never sewed the edges at all. They do tend to roll. If that bothers you a lot, you can take the time to iron your flats. I don't mind. I just realize that it makes the flat a little bit smaller when you account for all the edges being rolled in a bit like that. So if you have the option, go ahead, serge them, make them look pretty. If you don't have the option, you simply cut them. Step number four, fold the flats and put them on your baby. They're ready to use. My favorite fold to use with stretchy flats is the origami fold. Stretchy flats are so great to have in your collection. If you're ever in a situation where you're hand washing or hang drying or traveling like we are, they are one of my favorite types of cloth diapers. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. I also did a previous video showing how to sew multiple different types of diapers. So a booster, a flat, pre-fold, fitted diaper. You can watch that one as well if you're planning to sew your own cloth diaper stash. I do really like these flats. I would say the fabric they're made out of is my favorite out of all the stretchy flats that I have in my stash. I actually prefer this fabric I used from Nature's Fabric over all my purchased flats. Please subscribe for more on elimination communication and natural cloth diapering.